You are gonna be seeing a very different house today. The sheetrock just got hung last night and I'm gonna be talking through all the different steps that we had to take to get to this point. And in a week's time, our cabinets, believe it or not, are already coming. So let's head inside. In the last video, we went through some of the framing deficiencies that all were signed off on. So we got signed off on framing, we got signed off on electrical, and we got signed off on insulation. And all those had to happen prior to us hanging the sheetrock. The timeline of things has been probably the most stressful week just to make sure that everything was lining up. But we're here, we did it, and it's, uh, it's really coming together. Over here, our tubs that are not gonna be put in the bathroom. So we're swapping them out for something that is a bit more fitting, a bit more modern. But I do wanna show you guys, give you a little sneak peek of what the kitchen and bathroom for uh, fixtures are gonna look like. This is the nozzle that you turn. This is going to be the color of the bathroom cabinet. These are all a brushed gold finish. This obviously goes inside the wall. You aren't gonna see this. In order to finalize your plumbing before you can put sheetrock up, you have to have that part, which is why it's super important that you order all of this stuff, usually five to six weeks prior to your final plumbing inspection. So you can see this new duct they ran, and it goes to the side right over here. This stuff is really, really difficult to get off, but they have to do it in order to get the finish that you want. I interviewed three different professionals to do the drywall and finally decided to, uh, to move forward with uh, one professional, his name's Mike, he's great. So he mentioned, you know, this is a really different texture on the wall. Do you want to do an entirely different texture or do you want us to match it? And for cost savings, I am going to match it. In certain rooms, depending on the lighting, you can really see the texture, and I certainly didn't want it to be piecemeal together, so that's why I chose to go with Mike, because um, I really felt like he was gonna treat my house as if it was his own, so. For insulation, you see all these little nubs, or, oh gosh, <laughs> don't push those in. <laughs> all these little nubs. That's where they blew in insulation. And sometimes they do it from the outside of the house and you can see little plugs on the outside and you know that, oh, the exterior, you know, the house has been insulated. The bathrooms haven't been sheetrocked, but they've been insulated. You don't have to um, insulate interior walls, but it, it'll be nice for a sound barrier. The, the ducts are gonna get cleaned. There's so much dust and debris and, and giant, honestly, pieces of construction that get lodged inside of the ducts and it can obviously really damage your furnace back in the day, they just, uh, if you think of it kind of like Tetris, they just kind of stuck them together. And how they clean the, the ducts is um, with a, I don't know, maybe, will you explain the duct, the cleaning? Yeah, they usually use an air whip and it basically goes in there and it spins around. And it's actually a pretty violent process huh. that's more designed for systems that are all screwed together mechanically and everything. Gotcha. So I, I would recommend just a power vacuum style. Okay, and that generally works just as well? Yeah, so what they do is they'll probably go up to every register, uh, pull through that, and then they'll hook up to both plenums up above and down below here with a bigger vacuum. Okay. And then just do a whole system okay. vacuum on it on both sides. Much safer way to go, and it still gets the majority of, of all the stuff out of there. Unfortunately, the inspections have not been a breeze. Our electrical inspection actually failed three times prior to us getting signed off on it. So one of the things, ironically, that we had to get done with the, for the electrical to get signed off on was the framing. So if you'll remember, this right here is where we, where we ran the water line, where we ran electrical, and the inspector had to see that this was getting framed out and covered in order to sign off on the electrical inspection. So you would think that something like that would be framing, wasn't, I guess. So I hired a Bolton Insulation, which is a local provider to install all the insulation. These have not been painted yet, but they've been preparing. They they oiled, oiled them, took off all of the handles you can see. Oh God. Oh no. Well, looks like we're gonna have to cut that. 
the electricians install the fans and per code they are required to be in kitchens and laundry rooms and bathrooms but my lesson learned on that is that they installed the vents but they don't connect the, the airway the, or the airflow that exits the house. And so where they're originally installed, at least in the bathroom, there was no way for us to route that outside. So they had to be rerouted. So make sure that your HVAC tech and your electricians are talking to each other, or at least talking to you about where they're putting them. After the cabinets are installed in the upstairs kitchen, we're gonna get a, the professional to come in and measure all of the countertop space. The countertops will fit exactly to what we have. You need to have all of your fixtures, so your sink needs to be in, what is it, your air gap, I think, if you have that. So everything has to be perfect before they come in and they take those measurements. I am so glad that uh, almost all of our inspections are done and we are moving forward to uh, more of the finished products. It's been a very stressful week and a half, but I'm super happy with how everything has panned out. This coming week, I am so looking forward to getting the kitchen installed, hence why I'm standing here, because it's going to look drastically different and beautiful. So uh, cheers to a new kitchen, and thanks for following along.